our God indeed is Jehovah Rapha. And we are about to finally get to know how Miriam got healed after the many fractures that she had after the fatal accident. But before we get to the healing, there's a little bit of more lessons to learn. Miriam, yes. welcome sure. back. So now, we, your hand is a little bit functional. Yes. But not fully healed. Not fully healed. Actually, um, after those surgeries of dealing with the infection and everything, um, I started like having exercise for the hand. Like, in, that is back home. So now you had to go home, you, you were not yes. at the hospital no, anymore? No, no, no. Yeah. But we used to go like every, twice a week in the hospital at Kijabe. And luckily a friend of ours gave us a, a driver in the car. The times that it was really bad because, you know, even uh, it reached a point that finances was an issue. So we had to like start, in, we started reaching out to the friends. And um, getting my hand back was the was the happiest thing of my life. I could I could use my the walls in my in our home to start now walking and trying to use the scratches scratches miraculously. I could I, I could I could use the the scratches with the same hand. And from there I started now another journey of walking using my scratches mm. and um, I, I started like um, having a bath. Sharon, I all couldn't... All this while? All this while I was just wiping my body. I couldn't take a normal bath and um, after a while my hand, my hand stabilized and I started, I started um, another journey of worrying about now the hip. All this while, yes. had you I'm forgotten for about the hip? Yes, because yeah. it was, you know, I, for some reasons, my hip was mm. something that will permanent be the way it was. Because I had osteoarthritis, I, it was so painful, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep with my sides or stomach because of the hip. Because... You for, only had for, to sleep on your back. Yes, and for, for, for awkward reasons, I used to like keep on holding my, my hip every time I'm sitting down. Even when I'm in the car, I could only hold my hip because I can feel the movement of the bones. You could feel the bones? Moving, yes. So all I could do was to hold it. Tell me, Miriam, at, all, at this time, what, what was going on in your family? How you said you, you have six siblings and you have a mother and a father and you, of course you have cousins and aunties. What were people saying? Were people hopeful? Were they tired? Um, Sharon, um, I would say my family was very supportive. My mom was there. My dad was crying all the time and she, he was really supportive. And for the funny reason, my, 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 my daddy stopped taking alcohol. And it was like, God, if this will make you to heal my daughter, then let it be. And my sisters were all supportive. And uh, as um, back at home, I couldn't use the toilet. I, I, I used to have diapers and my sisters could change and make everything look as if I'm normal. And the, the, I have... Um, Four of my sisters were all actively involved in the in my healing process, and I would really thank God for that. Okay, so now your 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 hips, your hip needs to recover. My hip need to recover. But remember, when I went to Kijabe, the first thing they when they were examining my hip, they said it was really bad. Mm -hmm. It was really bad. And they suggested for um, total hip replacement. Something I've never what does, thought. What does that involve? Total hip replacement is a is a is a is a is a procedure of removing your your your, your natural hip and replacing it with a metallic hip. Cool. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, it it is very expensive in our hospitals, especially private hospitals and um, 
we couldn't raise that money and we started now involving friends. We had a short term organizing committee for, for Arambe, as they call it in Kenya, um, fundraise. So we had a fundraise and the people came in and they really showed their love. My church, my, my, former, my, my former job, my friends, my ministries at church, they really came in and my closest families, family friends and everybody was so much involved. And they came and they gave us the money that we needed. And we went for the hip replacement of which every, it was, it, it was a decision that everybody thought I will not have to make. Because tot, having a total hip replacement means a lot. Because that means that we'll never give birth normal way. You'll never have, um, you, you'll never do things that every other person does. Like tying your shoes, it's an issue. Mm. You can't bend, you can't sit on any other chair. You'll have to have your special chair. You'll have to have your special toilet. You'll have to have a person around you taking care of you because at the end of the day, you'll need to dress, you'll need to wear shoes, you'll need to, you know, do all manner of things. And bearing in mind that my hand is not too stable. And here I am going for it. And I was like, God, I so believe in you. I so believe in your word. You say that you'll do everything beautiful at your own time. And this, I think, it's your voice. It's not a doctor's voice. So I'm not going to, to, have, to, 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 to have a negative thought about it. I'm going for it. And every time I go to theatre, the doctors could hold their hands, they pray, they declare that that is the last surgery. And here I am to God, not what they are praying. It's your will. Let it, I know your will is the best. Let it be done. Mm -hmm. So um, I went for the total hip replacement. And um, every time I, before the surgery, when they are putting their anesthesia and trying to put me on to sleep for the operation, Sharon, I could, my body couldn't, couldn't, couldn't um, respond. respond to the medicine, to the anesthesia. Oh. And I was like, I can't hear anything, everything. And they were like, girl, what is wrong with you? So, okay, they used to have injections on their hand, mm. but this time around it was not working because I, every, I think all the areas of where the Mishipa the, Zadamu, the, the, mm. the mm. they couldn't find them anymore. And the Nyezilikwa, Zilikwa na Mashimo. So they had to start now looking Mishipa kwa Shingo. So they could, they could inject me through the shingle, sometimes head, sometimes back. And um, to me, that was not painful mm -hmm. compared to what I had gone through. Yeah. To cut the long story short, mm -hmm. I, I, I was, the operation was done and it was successful, thanks be to God. It took me like a year for me to start working with one crutch and after a, while, after a while I started working like any normal person. Now all this while there is a metal. There is a metal. In your body. Yes. So I went back home and I started doing my thing of Gobi. It's a hospital where I can have the surgery. I could uh, read like one of the hospitals to just be in India, Mangalo. They say they can. They 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 had shown a testimony of a, of a of a lady who did that elbow this replacement and it was successful. And the lady was testifying. So I said, Ah, why can't I try? But I don't have money. I don't know how. And um, I will not. I don't know. So now um, you have to travel to India. to India to have the. Total, to, to have total elbow replacement for me to have the, to gain the, the folding of the hand. Yeah. My, my fiancé, my fiancé who is now my husband, John, used to be so supportive, used to see life in me. Something that 
most of the people were not seen. And he, he encouraged me that this hand is going to work. Was he your friend back in Kenya? Were you talking about when, when in Kenya or after you went to India? My cue, uh, we started seeing, I started seeing John before the accident. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So um, he was so supportive. He could see life in me. And Sharon, John could come, pick me, we go to supermarket. And in supermarkets, like some of the items we have to put, to pick them from upstairs. And the guy would carry me up to the upstairs to where he wanted to put that particular item. He could drop me down without caring who is around, who is looking and what. So I would say he saw my hand folding. Mm. And he encouraged me, this hand is going to start working. And we believed in God. And miraculously, we got the money that we needed for the treatment in India. And I went to India, I was taken to India. And when the first, the, 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 the hospital that we had booked with Tejasvini on viewing my history and the, 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 the the, the, how the hand was was injured, the nature of the injury. They say they cannot help me. And I was so broken all the way from Kenya to India and she said, you cannot help me. Then I stood like a, I'm sorry to say, like a stupid person in front of him. I said, I'm not going back. I'm staying here until you give me a solution. Because you are a doctor in India. I mean, you have all the solutions. Yes. God miraculously provides the money that was needed for Miriam to go to India for her operation. And finally, she gets healed. We hear the story of how that happened after this short break. <laughs> 